Jesus is acknowledged in both Christianity and Islam and is inseparable from the core beliefs of each religion. Yet despite so many similarities and common grounds, there are several differences that are distinct to both Islam and Christianity. Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and I'm exploring 10 differences of Jesus in the religions of Islam and Christianity. So let's just jump right into it. Starting at number 10. In Islamic text, you won't find Jesus ever being referred to as the son of God because it is believed believe that God has no children and a lot of the differences related to this is how the term son of God is actually used. So check this. The Christian view is that Jesus is only God's son in the spiritual sense, not in a physical sense and that the term son of God is actually a title. One example of this that I found is like if you call someone the son of the Nile, it means that that person is from Egypt. So to say that Jesus is the son of God means that Jesus is from God. Next up at number 9, one of the biggest points of debate between Muslims and Christians is whether Jesus is also God or not. Muslims are clear in the belief that Jesus is not God himself because Jesus was a human. Christians believe that God took on the form of a burning bush when revealing himself to Moses, so it's not impossible for God to take on the form of a human in order to reveal himself to humans, just in a different way though. Another difference is that in the Quran, it shares the story of how Jesus spoke in the cradle as a baby, and it goes, Then she, Mary, pointed to him, and they said, How can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? He, Jesus, said, Verily, I am a slave of God. God, he has given me the scriptures and made me a prophet. And that's found in the Quran Surah 19 verses 29 to 30. Now in Christianity there's no such story as baby Jesus talking or anything like that. But it's not expressly denied. It could happen like it's possible that it happened in the view of Christianity. In the Bible though the first time Jesus is recorded to have spoken is when he's 12 years old. Muslims view the miracle of Jesus speaking as a baby as a sign that he is a special prophet from God, but it is not listed as one of the miracles of Jesus in the religion of Christianity. Okay, so moving on to number seven, let's take a look at the times that Jesus is mentioned. So Jesus, called Isa in Arabic, is one of the most mentioned people in the entire Quran. He's mentioned 25 times by the name Isa, and he's also mentioned in the third person 48 times, and also in the first person 35 times. There's other mentions of Jesus, but titles and attributes like the Son of Mary or the Word of God are used. Now over in Christianity, in the King James Version of the Bible, the name Jesus appears 937 times. However, that doesn't include other places where he's mentioned but not directly by name. So depending on the translation, the word Jesus appears between 900 to 1300 times and references to Jesus like using the term Christ or Lord appear several hundred times and also some of these words may be translated as Jesus. So it really just depends on the type of translation of the Bible that you use. Okay, so let's take a look at the differences with the crucifixion. Muslims do not believe that Jesus was crucified. Islamic tradition explains that Jesus was actually spared from being put to death. In the Quran Surah 4 verse 157 to 159 it says, And for their saying indeed we have killed the Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him. Nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed those who defer over it are in doubt. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain. So the central theme in Christianity on the other hand is that Jesus indeed did die through crucifixion. In the four gospels of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all go into great detail about Jesus dying on a cross. Halfway in at number five, Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet who was given a special message, the Injil or the gospel, to convey to all the people. And this message confirmed what was taught in the Torah and also foretold of the coming prophet Muhammad. Now in Christianity, Jesus also shares a gospel that is intended to be spread to the entire world. And the difference though is that in Christianity, the one who Jesus foretells is coming after him is the Holy Spirit, who is believed to also be God, not the prophet Muhammad. All right, let's talk about the miracles now. While Muslims accept that Jesus was a servant of God, as well as a teacher, they do not believe that he was actually divine. The Quran describes the miracles of Jesus, such as healing the sick and raising the dead, but it does not ascribe these miracles to him being divine. 
sign. Instead, Jesus is said to be a sign to all mankind of God's endless mercy. Christianity, on the other hand, ascribes his miracles to him being divine, as well as an example of what people can accomplish if they have total faith in God. In the book of John 14 verses 12, it says, Very truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And those are the words of Jesus, according to the Bible. Now number three, Muslims do not believe in original sin. And if you don't know, original sin, by the way, is a Christian belief that is believed that the nature to sin actually stems from Adam and Eve disobeying God at the beginning. So now everyone born as a default has like this nature to disobey God. But Muslims don't actually share that view, so they don't see the need for a savior in the same way that Christians do. Christianity teaches that Jesus came in the form of a human so that he could allow all humans to take on his divine nature, which is the only hope to be saved. The book of 2 Peter 1 verses 4 says, And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Now the Muslim view is that as long as any Anyone accepts God and professes Muhammad as his messenger and strives to submit their will to God, that's all that's needed to be saved. Okay, so number two, we have the belief in the return of Jesus in these two religions. These are also completely different. According to the popular Islamic belief, in the end times, Jesus will return and proclaim Islam to be the true religion, and all Christians will just convert. All other religions will no longer exist and Jesus will be the sole ruler of the world and the reign of Jesus will last 40 years. He will also join forces with the Mahdi who is the redeemer in Islam to defeat the Dajjal or the Antichrist. And the most common Christian belief about this so is that when Jesus returns in the end times, everyone will see him. It's going to be loud. All the angels in heaven are going to come back with him and everyone that passed away that was deemed righteous will actually resurrect at that moment and everyone that's alive deemed righteous will join those who resurrected and be caught up in the sky and everybody goes to heaven. So yeah, two completely different views right there. And finally, number one, this probably you'll hear this question asked a lot in debates between Muslims and Christians about Jesus is that did Jesus say that he was God? Well, the belief in Christianity is that he in fact did say that. Jesus says things like, before Abraham was, I am, and that I and the Father are one, and that if you see me, you've seen the Father. So those are all statements that you find in the Bible. Now the Muslim belief is that these statements still do not clearly have Jesus saying that he is God. So the debate still continues. All right guys, so those were 10 differences of Jesus in the religions of Islam and Christianity. Let me know what you guys thought about anything that I brought up and what are some of your views? Sound off down below in the comment section. Now if you enjoyed this video, check out this other one right beside my head. Just tap the annotation, it'll take you straight to it. Also my social media links are below in the video description section so you can follow me over there and keep up to date with what I'm doing when I'm not filming these episodes. And if you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell that way you'll be notified of future videos and hey you get to join the FTD Facts family. All right guys it's been great hanging out with you in this episode. I'm excited. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Peace.